Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. This week, Everest Highfelt creditors voted in favour of a business rescue plan amid broader sector warnings of downscaling. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The vote finally took place this week for a business rescue plan for Everest Highfelt. That's correct. Uh, Everest Highfelt went into business rescue around April this year. We all know that the steel market's in a very bad state. And uh, that was the first company to show the real signs of stress, although we've noticed right across the board that uh, steel companies are either downsizing or warning of downsizing or um, calling for protection. But in April, there was a formal process of the company going into business rescue. Um, the reasons for that are, are not clear, but it seems to be an underinvestment over some years, plus very bad uh, market conditions that sort of uh, everything came together in a perfect storm. And uh, since then, you know, the creditors who are owed over a billion rand by this company uh, have been looking to either liquidation um, or some sort of business rescue to see whether they can salvage anything from that. And eventually, in about mid-September, a business rescue plan was uh, published by the practitioners that had been running this process. Uh, that was taken to a vote in Santon a, a, a few weeks ago, and it was decided to adjourn that vote. Uh, in favour of trying to get a bit more information around what the implications were of the plan. And then in, uh, in, in, in Malaklerni this week, the creditors gathered uh, on the site and eventually had the vote. Uh, there were some issues around, uh, there was a legal challenge to, to the business rescue plan being put to a vote because there was an, uh, another bidder, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, an alternative bidder to the, the Chinese uh, Hong Kong based company uh, International Re Resources Limited. There was an alternative offer that was proposing a uh, hundred cents in a share, a uh, hundred cents in the rand recovery for creditors, but they were unable to put the uh, ten million dollar deposit up to get access to the virtual room and, was, and were disqualified from the process. Um, they, they therefore tried to stop the, the the vote that failed in the court, but not on not on the merits, only on the. Uh, uh, on the, the urgency of the application, so there's potential still a legal challenge here. But uh, eventually the creditors did vote and overwhelmingly did support the business rescue plan, uh, which uh, includes this buyout by this uh, international IRL uh, of China, Hong Kong, China. What are the prospects for salvaging the company? Well, that's going to be interesting because this is just one of the milestones. It's a very important milestone that the creditors had to vote in support of business rescue. And uh, so that box is ticked, but there are many other conditions to this deal. And uh, those are all outstanding still. And uh, the, those, now, those boxes now have to be ticked over the next few months. In fact, the, the business rescue practitioners have given themselves to the middle of next year to finalize uh, all those aspects but are hoping to do it sooner than that. And there, there's some critical uh, added components that uh, all conditions precedent, the, these things relate to the environmental compliance of that plant is, is difficult. And for, uh, for restart up, uh, if the environmental authorities were to enforce uh, fully, it would be very difficult for um, the new owner to start up the, the, the facility. So they're gonna have to get some sort of special treatment there, I think. To get uh, to get it back into a startup position, there's issues around whether there's going to be enough protection in the South African market in the form of duties. There's a number of applications before ITAC at the moment. That box has to be ticked, I think, before uh, the Chinese company will move in. And there's a, a there's a num there's a number of other issues that will also have to be dealt with, uh, and as well as you know, we still have to have an accredited adjudication process that s sets out exactly how much um, is going to be paid to creditors and then the moment the figure between uh, varies between 15 and 30 cents and that uh, and that is before a possible assessment by, from the tax authorities from SARS so that could be diluted further so there's still a long way to go in this process but I think what we saw this week was a major milestone. There's also ongoing distress across the sector which is taking a toll on companies and employees. That's right. I think we saw um, CIFSA which really represents the metal uh, metals industry including the primary steel sector saying that you know downsizing of the industry is probably unavoidable. There's a number of section 189 notices which are retrenchment notices in the market. We know about Evraz as they in the process of consultations they just about finalized 
with their consultations, which basically halve the staffing at, uh, at Everest Half Health, should it survive, to, uh, from the for former figure of around 2,400 employees. We know that ArcelorMittal has been looking at uh, issues around their Ferenikin works. We know that Funderbell has also gone into some sort of review and there's likely to be some uh, change of configuration in terms of output, but also staffing there. And also Score Metals has put out a Section 199 notice. So this industry is still in uh, experiencing major stress. What has been <coughs> interesting to see is how government, business and labour have come together around this industry. That's quite a, a different uh, tone from what we used to in the steel sector where government and, and the steel industry have really been at loggerheads for over a decade and uh, especially around pricing and, and this stress has forced the industry uh, to come together with government and try to seek its support. We've already seen protection on ste three steel products coming through. We know there's applications for across the board just about every product that we produce. There are applications in front of ITAC and there's a, a promise of fast tracking those applications to give uh, that 10% duty across the board generally for steel products. And we can probably also s expect at some point anti dumping applications going before the Commission uh, for adjudication as well. So we're not out of the woods in the sector uh, by, any, uh, by any means and uh, it's going to be still quite a torrid few months I think for uh, workers that or employees that work at these companies but also for the, the shareholders and the other stakeholders in the businesses. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.